Hi guys, my name is Sabrina and welcome back to my channel. Oh my goodness, am I looking forward to showing you guys this video. This took me the longest a drawing has ever took me, I believe. And I'm not even thinking of the line art and the pencil work and the sketch work and everything. This is just purely the coloring. It took, well, I want to say all day because it felt like all day, but yeah, it took hours to color this in. I was trying to be so meticulous with everything, making sure the details were all as good as possible. And I was also a little nervous for this one because I've never in my life colored in a glass of tea, let alone a transparent glass of tea. So what I did to start off with, as you can see, um, also the lighting is all over the place. I know, I'm so sorry guys. It was early morning when I started this and the sun was literally shining in directly into the office and we have blinds in the office as you can see. And it kind of went from really sunny to cloudy and oh God, it's all over the place over here in Ireland. It's just, I don't know. But that was going on with the lighting there. So that's why there was a lot of sun right there. But I started out with making a honeycomb pattern and I decided to have them lie flat like this. I know that sometimes with the honeycomb pattern, the pointy bits are like facing up and I decided against that and I really wanted to have them lie flat and I just like the look a bit better myself. So I tried to research the colors of the honeycomb as well. So I used a reference to see if I could have that as a help for picking out the colors. And it was quite tricky in all fairness to try and get this right. I felt like I didn't have all the right colors for a lot of things in this drawing. Now with the girl part, I'm, I'm happy with how she turned out. But for the honeycomb, for example, I only have about four yellows and I do have a few oranges, but I felt like the colors that I had weren't really cutting it. So I tried to make do with what I have. And you know, when you have a limited amount of markers, that's what you have to do. There is very little choice in that, but yeah, that's what I did. So I started out by looking at the references and they showed a shadow inside the actual honeycomb bits and that's what I tried to mimic here as well so I have like the outside light or not light yellow but like in yellow and then the honeycomb bits are orange and I actually went in with a few skin tone colors because they gave the best outcome on top of that yellow so I thought maybe do a brown or a light brown or something like that but it didn't quite go as I wanted. It wasn't subtle enough. It was really in your face and I wanted the shading to be more subtle and the actual skin tones that I have, oh, I suppose they're a shade of brown too, but they gave me the result that I wanted. So funny fact, they're actually what I used for the girl, her skin tone as well. More for the shading though. So not for the base skin tone, more for the shading. And that's what I started off with. So. I'll leave you watch this section and I'll come back to you when I'm starting to color in the girl.
say it really is looking really nice when you have like the background done and the rest of the picture or your drawing is still white and just line art it just looks so nice but i start with the girl over here and as always i try to start with the skin tones and the skin color fill that in and give it some shading and as i've started to do recently i start to do it one section at a time so i want like the head part done first and then i go back to her neck and then her arm and then her hand so that's kind Kind of my process there and I I know it looks so out of place when you start with the skin tones because you can think in your head oh they look too dark or this looks too gray or not at all the color that you wanted and it's I love how it just ties back together I, I've probably said that a few times in my videos already I just love how that looks but I wanted the light to come from kind of the top facing down and that's why she has like the shading light shading like at her hairline over there and then her bottom the bottom of her arm and like the bottom area of her hand and i went in with some blush as well so she's got the blush on her cheeks i didn't give her any eye makeup though like she's got like enough mascara and eyeliner on as you can see i figured that would be enough um and I don't want all my drawings to have like really big outgoing eyeshadow and everything. So that's what I've done there. And on her arm, I put a bit of blush as well. And on her fingers, I just wanted to give them a bit more oomph. And I think it does help with the drawing. I'm figuring, figuring things out still. But I think I'm on the right track here. I think that's going well. So with the hair, I really thought of her with purple hair and when I was actually talking to a neighbor, I explained what I wanted to do and I already told her I wanted her to have purple hair and I wanted to have her light purple hair as well. So not like the really strong shade, but just a really nice subtle shade of purple or violet as they call it with copic markers. So that's what I went for here. And I know it's got a bit of a gray tone in it and that's because the lighter purples that I have are ones with a gray tone. And again, this is having to make do with the supplies that you've got and I just don't have all the copic colors yet. So if you're out there and you want to donate more copic colors to me, feel free to send me some. But that's what I went for there. and. I tried to shade the hair as I kind of always do as well and add in some darker areas where the light would not hit and keep the areas where you have like a natural highlight and keep those as a highlight as well and that turned out quite well I'm quite happy with that I do think I could have blended them just a bit better I don't know what went wrong here it doesn't look the way it always kind of looks maybe because the colors aren't too different enough they're kind of all the same shades maybe they're too close in shade i think that is what's going on there but you know it's okay it's it's all right to have like colors in the same range as well and not everything has to be dark so that's what i went for here i wanted her to have like a lighter purple shade so this is not too dark for what i've wanted and the feathers in as her earrings were kind of a last moment decision i was like it just needs something more around her face except for aside from just her hair and her actual face so she needs something else so i decided to give her accessories so that's fun to try too and i eventually made the earrings the same shade as the hoodie as well so you'll see me do that later on too and i have something for lighter eyes i think i'm starting that soon as well there we go i like light eyes i don't have light eyes myself i have green eyes but they're not light green they're darker and i just love how light eyes look with like you know tan skin and whether it's dark or light hair i just i just love it so that's why i think i kind of always go for light eyes because i think they're pretty so after this you can see me shading in the feathers i just went in with like the light blue that i've got the same for the hoodie and then i went in with the darker blue two darker blue shades actually and with my posca paint pen i gave it some highlights as well i just wanted to have a bit more to it 
so that worked quite well and I decided to do the sparkle in her eyes while I was at it as well so I didn't want to wait till the end because I was afraid I was going to forget stuff and I was like now I'm thinking of it so now I've got to do it so for her hoodie I kind of the same as the feathers I started out with the light blue and then I'm just going a bit darker and it's not a really really bright shade of blue it's a bit on the how do you say that like i don't want to say dollar side because it's not a dull color like it's not boring but that's what i went for here and i just gave it some shading as well keeping in my mind that the light was coming kind of from above too so that's what i wanted to do and oh i could shoot myself for like this area over here my pen decided to bleed on me i don't know what happened it was my c4 gray and as you could see the color just spread everywhere and oh my goodness how are you going to save something like that i had no clue so what i did is i went back in with the skin color on her neck because it mainly went on her neck over there and i tried to blend it in with that so fingers crossed like it looks okay and i suppose if you didn't see it happening you wouldn't really notice it it's a bit darker than the rest of the areas but there's really nothing i could do about it and thank goodness it's only at that area and not like in the middle of her face or in the middle of an area where it really stands out and in hindsight i should have kind of stopped and maybe tested it out on my scrap paper next to me because it happened on her sleeve as well and i don't know if you saw that but i remember seeing that on my sleeve on the sleeve part of the drawing and i was like oh this is really juicy so i have to be careful with this and then just blur it out like oh my goodness why <laughs> i did not want that to happen but it did and i think i kind of saved it and whatever went to like the bottom of like the hoodie kind of acts as a shadow now so i suppose it kind of all worked out in the end and after this i moved to the cup of tea so i decided to start with a thing that i just i know how to draw there or how to color in and it's it's fairly simple so i went in with the browns for for the stick for the stick of mint and this is how they serve fresh mint tea in the netherlands and the reason as well why there's a honeycomb behind it is because you always get honey with your mint tea and i know not everyone likes tea and fair enough no problem at all but come on like if you have mint tea you have to have the honey in it so that's kind of my thought process there with the background that's why i went for the honeycomb background because it's just to me it's all one package deal like when you order mint tea you just put your honey in you don't put sugar in put the honey in and when you have the mint as well they put it like you see it over here like a stick of mint and you just they just put it in and that's how you drink it it's just a plant in your tea so <laughs> that that's how we do it so the coloring of the mint leaves was fairly simple it's kind of what i always do i did make sure to like ruffle up the edges of the leaves themselves because mint tea is not like a perfect straight edge it's like a bit curvy and everything look up mint tea and you'll see exactly what i mean or I'll show you a picture. I can show you a picture. I can maybe implement it over here. And that's what I did. So I went through all the leaves and it took forever. And as always, I used three colors of green. And yeah, that wasn't even the hardest bit. That was like the easiest bit. So I'll leave you watch the rest until after the leaves are finished and then I'll talk to you about the actual tea and the glass and everything. Cause that was a bit tricky.
glass I did have a reference as well I pulled up references of mint tea and clear glass like transparent glass and I kind of looked where the highlights were and where the tea how you could see the tea in it how you could see the mint leaves in it and the reflections and everything so I tried to look up that and knowing it's a clear glass I had to incorporate like the girl behind it as well so I didn't do it with the actual tea I noticed in hindsight so I don't know why I just didn't think of it I thought you know once the tea is done it's only the cup that I have to do but kind of they have, kind of have to do it for the tea as well but anyway what's done is done and i that's why i added the blue behind her and the skin tone behind the glass as well because i wanted to have this illusion that she was really standing behind the glass so for the rest i really didn't know how to start so you saw me going in with the grain and that completely ends up disappearing because i went over it with other colors i was like no this is this is not what i should do and how it should look and this is my very first time doing a transparent glass so i don't think i did too bad it's a learning process and i just have to try this more times to try and get this right and who knows in my next drawing i might or one of my future drawings so i went in with the handle and because i have such a vibrant background i needed to incorporate that like in the glass as well so i did go in kind of continuing the honeycomb pattern but without the black borders so i figured that might help just a little bit to differentiate between the glass and the background so that's what i did and i think that looks quite quite nice i think that helped the drawing a little bit as for the tea color i didn't know what shade to pick for the actual tea I didn't want to make it too dark but I, then again I didn't have like a light enough shade and I didn't quite know how to shade it so I went in with this one and I don't know if that was the right call and I know this is something I have to improve I think this is my weak point of my drawing but that's purely because I didn't know how to do it and when you've never done something like this practice makes perfect you know and you have to start somewhere I'm already nearing the end of the video and I know this is a longer video than usual and I'm sorry guys this video just took forever to color in and I wanted to make sure that it was done right so I do not regret for this to be a longer video um, <laughs> I'm really happy with the outcome however and I hope you guys like the drawing as well and as you can see you sometimes you just have to practice and practice and practice to make it as good as possible and this for me was kind of double-sided i love the piece i think it's absolutely amazing it's one of the nicer ones i've done i think and it's really complete as well with the background and i know the background is simple and repetitive but it adds to the overall feel of the drawing if it was just a girl on the cup it would have been pretty boring so i'm happy with it i hope you guys like it too if you did please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below don't forget guys and <laughs> please support me that way and yeah no i really enjoyed this i know i keep saying that like the hardest bit as well was adding the white bits in as well so the reflections i ended up using my posca paint pen for that so they actually helped a lot with it as you can see it's just adding to the picture so much more i thought that maybe the colors blender could pull enough color away from it but it didn't so learn my lesson there and yeah practice piece a lot of lessons learned in this one and it's great so i can take that on to my next drawing so thanks again guys i really hope you enjoyed watching if you did please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below and i'll catch you guys next time bye